We would like to acknowledge that the episodes in this series are produced on the traditional unceded lands of the Coast Salish peoples, which includes the territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. We thank them for allowing us to be their guests. Programmed to speak, speak sure, this way. Sure. Well, I, yeah, I'm talking. I mean, yeah, same way for me. In North yeah. Carolina, right? Yeah. yeah. You're, it's I, you're imprinted. I've been here 52 years. Yeah. And people still say, you know, I sound I've been like here 52 a. 52 years too. 1970. You know? yeah. 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 I, I can't shake it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, I can. So I've lived in. I lived in Montreal first. We emigrated to Montreal. I love Montreal. I went to high school there, mm. and um, I thought the rest of Canada was like Montreal. Uh, <laughs> and, and then when we moved to Victoria, I was very surprised. <laughs> yeah. It was like Bournemouth. Yeah. Uh, with double decker buses and cream teas and incredibly boring. Next, because I used to hang out. Well, I wasn't. I'd hang out in Crescent Street in the seventies. Right. And I had, right. Like, my best friend was like twenty-three years old, and I was. 16 and we got in all kinds of trouble and I didn't want to come to the West Coast. I mean, are you kidding me? I just wanted to stay yeah. in Montreal. I had two older brothers who got who were lucky because they one of them stayed at McGill. My uh -huh. parents said, that's fine, you can stay there. But I wasn't quite old at that stage. Yeah. So I came out to the West Coast and uh, Victoria. How uh, long was it before you decided that you really liked it out here? Maybe, oh, 30 years. <laughs> many years. I, well, I can't really say exactly. I think sometime in the 80s it dawned on me that this, I, this, was, I, this was sort of, I, I'd taken to it, you know. Yeah. Well, the weather I, is very English. You probably yeah. didn't remember that, though, from I remember, your childhood. I remember a lot about England, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think I, I, for the first eight years I wanted to go back. Uh -huh. so then I went back to theatre school uh -huh. for three years. Where? Uh, a place you'd never have heard of, uh, the Rose Bruford College. It's in South East London. Okay. It's twinned with East 15. It's one of the really small. But my father used to teach there. That's how oh. I knew about it. Oh. And that's how I came to interview to get in there. I was at UVic, uh -huh. skipping all my classes and basically enjoying myself in the shop, painting scenery. and. So you were already into that? I was already into it, and then I, I thought, well, I didn't want to get a degree in it, I just want to go to get a more of a practical experience. So that's, my father said, well, why don't you, why don't you go to Rose Bruford? They have a technical program there. And your father was, what was he teaching? Well, he taught English. Well, uh -huh. He's an English teacher all his life, but uh, right. there's a real bias towards theatre. You know, he, my parents acted in repertory mm -hmm. back in the 50s, before, when they met. He'd got out of the, out of the navy. My mum got out of art school. Yeah. They did the whole rep thing for about five years. That's kind of cool. And then family came along and yeah. had to get a real job. <laughs> 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 and um, so that's uh, yeah. So always always loved theatre. You know, always yeah, always a big thing in the family. That's good. Not enough engineers that's in great. the family. That's Definitely great. <laughs> So you just sort of just you ended up becoming kind of a shop rat, you know. I <laughs> well, I see. Well, the great thing was that as soon as I got to Uvic, I uh, two weeks into it, we had to do a, a basic course making a flat, you know, right. theatre one hundred, right. whatever. And I already knew how to use tools, and so the gentleman who ran the program spotted that and said, "Would I like to be uh, an assistant for six dollars an hour?" I went, Whoa, sign me up. And I did that for, I 
have a couple of years, 20 hours a week. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I lived on. Yeah. 120 bucks. Wow. Give or take 10. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who was so it? Who, who, who was it? Who was your It was Bindon Kinghorn. Like he's long gone from UVic. He's yeah. an English guy. He was probably only about ten years older than me, but he yeah. ran a cor- ran the course there. He'd come to Victoria from the Bristol Old Vic. Uh huh. And he'd been a stage manager there or something and somehow I'd got a job at UVic, uh, running the technical theatre world end of things. Yeah. And he was great. He was very, uh, super encouraging. Um, but it wasn't so much as that. It's just I really got in. I really got in sync with the uh, gentleman who ran the design program, Bill West, who I think died about ten plus years ago. And he was great. You know, I ended up literally skipping class. He would. I'd be enrolled in his classes, but then he would get me, most people set up sketching. You know, he'd make an arrangement of some bits of wood or something and say, right, okay, sketch that. And then we'd leave them to it. And then he and I would go off and we'd paint the scenery. And I'd clean his pockets out, yeah. match his paint. And, yeah. and we'd smoke. And we'd he'd talk about being in the tank or... And wow. And I really loved him. You know, he was just great. I, I thought, I didn't really get a degree in this. This is ridiculous. I just want to have a practical experience. That's how I ended up going to. That's great. Skipping over a living because I wanted to go back to England anyway. Right. Yeah. For a, yeah. A while anyway. Yeah. I, I did three years there and I thought I'd stay, but then I came back for the summer and accidentally got a job here. Oh yeah. Okay. And that was Bastion Theatre. Right. That was. You know, yes. Long gone. It was the local regional. Yeah. Theatre in, in in Victoria. Yeah. So I did props there. Which is that the one that's got the old? That's the old, old was the old theater house. It had the had boxes on the side. Oh, I think we uh, well, we, uh, we would use uh, we use the the McPherson Playhouse. Ah, well, right. I don't think it's that that old. Uh, there was yeah. the Royal Theater. Or something. Yeah. There's, There's one that we worked in that we did a show in and I was doing yeah. tech work there and trying to hang some lights and the grid was so high it was yeah. way it was like a zillion feet up it in the air to get to the grid yeah, and I remember being right on the very top of the ladder like just with one foot yeah. <laughs> hooking onto the top rung of the ladder and <laughs> reaching out trying to screw this light as you used to like stand on the very top rung of the ladder like without any concern. Never again. I, I just, I got on the ladder the other day, I thought, well, oh, I better watch out, you know. Yeah. 65. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hello. I, I would teeter, though. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you, it was terrible. Reaching with One the screwdriver. One of those kind of a f- A-frame ladders with the yeah. f- thing, and the, you know. It might have been, it might have been the Belfry in Victoria. That's a small thing that used to be in church. No, I've been. No. I, I know the Belfry. You know the Belfry. No, this was the old, old theater. I can't remember. Anyone that is Very much of a slot, you know. The, the, the. I can just can't remember. I, you know. Anyhow, sorry. Keep so, going. Keep going. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I was there for a while, and then. Um, so how did you say you accidentally got the job? You just sort well, of. My friend, I, my my ex, uh, my old school friend, Michael Boucher, who right. Michael, Michael Boucher and Tishwana, who right. I went to UVic with. Michael had a job at Bastion as an associate producer, associate right. di- director, I think. Right. And he incidentally got the school tour yeah. to do. So that's how he called me. So Idiot. <laughs> well, no. Sorry, that's my phone. <laughs> well, we'll my we'll phone. cut this part out. Oh, we thought he was, he was a goner last week. Oh, yeah. Last weekend. That's a pretty interesting graphic. Oh, hello. Yeah, Helen, that's... I don't know where she got that, but... There we go. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, so, so, Michael yeah, Boucher Mike, and yeah, Tish. Michael, yeah. uh, I, got, I came back for the summer, and I got in touch with Michael and Tish, and Michael said, oh my god, I've got this job. Would you like to do it? It was the Snow, the snow Queen. Okay. A touring production of the Snow Queen. Okay. Right? Yeah. And I said, okay, great, sign, sign me up, you know, because you, you just got straight out of college and somebody's offering you $250 a week, you know. I mean, I'm there, you know. <laughs> it's like untold riches. <laughs> and um, so I did that. I remember trying to, trying to work out how to make a collapsible iceberg. 
Right. How would I do that? Like Martha Graham like kind of a stretch lycra thing uh-huh. with tubes with elastic in like like a like a tent, you know. I was trying to right. this abstract because it all had to fold up in a van, right? Yes, 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 right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I just remember being there in the workshop at like three in the morning by myself, like it's all going wrong, you know, it's all going horribly wrong. <laughs> like, oh, teeth gnashing, you know. The things bending, people will do for 250 fabric, a week. Like, damn it, you know. I, can't, I think I gave up on them. I think I, I had these, I gave up on them being collapsible. They were sort of, they clamshelled together. I couldn't get, okay. I just thought it would be a, Good enough. you know, fantastic. <laughs> as long as it fits in the van, I think. Did it's I care the, about, like, the Snow Queen? Forget it, you know. <laughs> And what was the other thing? It was another. Oh yeah, there was another. Uh, it had to go. There were two shows because one had to be for the, the juniors and one for older kids. Right. I can't remember what the other one was, but it involved Inuit costumes. Okay. Yeah. Which I remember, you know, looking seriously through at the library as, as one did. You know, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. all you had. Yeah. Uh, sketching up these costumes and working out how to make them, but I made them out of this fiber fill. These, these tunic things, like thick. Had to look like. It has a really thick, like, caribou hide, you know. Yes. I'm making them out of brushed cotton and old bedspread type of fiber fill, you know, and people were just fucking <laughs> roasting in these costumes. And they would be soaking wet, and I said, well, you can turn them inside out, and they'd dry out, you know, in your wretched little motel room. So they'd know, be soaking wet because of the play? Because of this? Well, yeah, running around, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah right, right, sweating, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> I get you, yeah. But it's amazing what you learn, and what you, you know, I remember making frozen fish as well, I had to make a bunch of frozen fish. I just learned how to make fiberglass and make moulds, you know, yeah, yeah. so I couldn't have said, I could have just stitched them out of cotton and painted them, you know, and stuffed them with, with beans. cat, cat. Or something <laughs> but no, I have to make the sculpt them, make molds, fiberglass. I mean, just like ten times more steps. Yeah, yeah. Because right. that's what I've just come from, you know, school. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, I know how to do these fish. Yeah. It's totally wrong way of doing it, but I just, you know, <laughs> just, just learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. It. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of great. I mean, it's great looking back on it because it's the, they're definitely rose-colored specks now. Yeah. But they weren't then, you know. It was like every show was like teeth gnashing and yes. angst over how you should have, could have done it this way instead, you know. I got a job <laughs> when I was working at Freddie Wood at UBC. I had, I was there working as a techie and, and I had to uh, take a stencil and mm. paint on glass with uh, Epsom salts so oh, it would look wow. like they were etched yes. glass. Yeah. You know, and it was an entire wall oh of, 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 of mullioned windows, like yeah. like maybe <laughs> 300 <laughs> mullioned windows. It took forever. It was a part of a course. No, no, this was, I, was, I had a job there, and that was what I was doing, and it was right. like, yes, okay, I will do that. <laughs> it crazy. It took and you're into like hour 95. Yeah, it took and forever. Going, oh my God, it's crazy. How did you get sucked in? No, I love that though. It's really, really great because you are making, I you know, it. you're learning all these techniques. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. I think I learned, because when I was very small, my, my dad would, he would teach uh, at, at a boys' grammar school. So when I was about six or seven, he would do, he'd, all, it was a boys' grammar school, so they would do, um, they would do um, The Alchemist, they'd do uh, Maybe It's Not for Burning, all these sort of very interesting plays. Mm-hmm. And half the cast would be boys dressed as girls. Right. With their very high pitched voices. And but my father would bring home all sorts of things to make. So I can remember helping him, you know, making him a breastplate for Medea, you know. Right. And he would make it out of carpet underlay, laid over top, and he kind of mould stuff out of sand. And then he, I can't remember how he did it. And I just thought, oh, this is amazing, you know, because I used yeah. to love going up to things that weren't real, you know, like, oh, oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. papier mache, it's yeah, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I always loved that stuff, you know, the, the, the artifice. Yeah. Of the so theatre you, was so much, and I, I, acting, you know, I loved acting, but it was like, it fell by the wayside because it was way more interesting yeah. making things, I think. Yeah. Oh, you really came by it honestly, eh? I think I did. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think it's, I think it's in the in the genes. I mean, yeah. like I say, I've got three brothers and one is a 
one is much one brother has got a real scientific bent and then the others are yeah. totally into the arts yeah. and my yeah. parents encourage that you know yeah yeah and it's like when they're encouraging the, their grandchildren i say no 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 look let's have a let's have an engineer <laughs> Come on, somebody. Can we have a police officer? The <laughs> a firefighter. No. So yeah, but it, it's then I kind of fell into film. Okay, how through. did that happen? Well, I I came over I, again. Tish wanted Yeah. Tish was working on a show uh, up at Panorama Studios, and it was Plan of the Cave Bear. Yes. And I think she, right. I'm not sure if she was designing it or assistant design costumes. And she said, well, they're just crying out for people to make stuff. You know, um, Betty Thomas, who um, ran, was her husband, ran Thomas Special Effects. Yes. Desperate for people to make moulds of things because they need skulls and things like that mm -hmm. for this cave bear show. Yeah. So I came over on the, on the bus and I went up to Panorama and had an interview with Betty. Yeah. Panorama's like way, way up there. Yes. Right? And she gave me the job on the spot. And I was so like I was just on the I was like tripping over myself. Wow. I go, oh my god, I don't have a cell phone, otherwise I'd phone people. But I just thought this is incredible. And I walked all the way down from Panorama. Quite I walked good. over the Lionsgate Bridge. Yeah. I walked all the way to the bus station because I just I was delirious. Oh, I've got this <laughs> job. I can't believe it. Now, for people who don't know Vancouver, that's, th a, that's a long I mean, way. I walked and that's walked a good walked. long way. Panorama itself is up on it's the is on the now. North Shore, way up the side of the yeah. mountain. I think it, it the building I think is way, gone now. It's been it's turned not, into condos yeah, now. Yeah, long gone. But it used to be the only studio. It was the only really. well yeah. that I knew of, yeah. you know. And they were just turning the bridge studio from a bus yeah. depot into, yeah. uh, or it formerly yeah. had you know, obviously been a bridge yeah. building facility. Yeah. But that was all just changing then, you know, yeah. into studio space. Yeah. But Panorama was it, you know. Yeah. But I think I got all the way down to Marine Drive. I thought this is ridiculous. I, I I can't give up now. I have to because I wanted to walk over the landscape. I really did. Just just like bridges. I like bridges. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked. I, I have no idea. I had a map. I did have a map with me. And I eventually got back to the bus station, wherever it was. It was by the by by the theatre over there. It used yeah. to be his car park now. Yeah. And off I went back to Victoria, as I say. Like, yeah. I I come back next week, you start next week, you know. Yeah. <coughs> so that was an IA job? You were like... You, you I wasn't an IA at that point. No, no. it wasn't. It was uh, because it was a sort of a contract job. So she she was making all the props for Town of the Paint. Well, not all Oh, I see. So a, you a worked for her company or something. So I was working for her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, out of that job, I got a lot of contacts. Yeah, And I got sure. a lot of people. I, I spent the whole summer doing that job. Uh, again, sometimes not using the right technique, you know, <laughs> like fiberglass and it should have been something else. But, but again, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit more proficient at this point, but I also knew how to make moulds. So uh -huh. that was a really good part of the job was making yeah. complicated moulds like of skulls that had you know, eight different parts. Sure. But you make all, all the pieces have to then fit together. It's very complicated, Yeah. but satisfying. Yeah. And um, Great, wonderful. So that's how, I, I thought I, that's how I got into Vancouver. I, I kept on sleeping at Michael and Tish's couch. Bless them. You know, in those early days, they were encouraging me. And I would come over more and more from Victoria, and I thought, there's nothing for me in Victoria. No, there wasn't anything. You know, it just, Bastion Theatre did fold eventually. You yeah. know, I did about three years there. And, yeah. and then Ed Stevenson, who ran it, left, and it changed, and it wasn't quite what I wanted to do anymore. Yeah. And, um, so did you do any so theatre here when you came over, or were you just, did some, you just jump right into the film? I bit? did a bit of both. I mean, yeah. I did a little bit. I, I met Walter Learning. Oh, yes, right, yeah, Walter, at the Playhouse. I, somehow, I don't know how I got in. I, I, did, I did a couple of costume designs at the Playhouse, and then I got a, uh, I got a set design or two t there, and then I, then I segued into film, and I was trying to juggle doing theatre work. And the film, which was right. too hard, yeah. because you get booked six months in advance yeah. to do, you know, eight weeks of yeah. Yeah. work on a show. It's, you know, it's very hard because yeah. the film work would come. They they call me and say, "What are you? Can you come tomorrow?" Yeah. 
and you get right, you drop everything you do because it's nine months of work, like nine solid months of work, not nine weeks of work. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very hard, and I juggled a few, a few times. The last time I did a, a play, I I did Of Mice and Men. Oh, the think. one that uh, uh, that Bill Dahl yeah. directed. Yeah, so yeah, I did yeah. that, and on the very first day of rehearsals, I, I got a film job. So I remember that was very stressful because I... Um, I couldn't, I, it was very hard to turn the film job down because it literally was nine months of work. So I said to Bill, look, I, you're, they were, luckily for me, they were rehearsing on Saturdays. And I, every day, Tracy, who did props, and I was in costumes as well, I was oh, so hard. I'd come for fittings and things, and then I'd come at night, you know, I'd let myself into the playhouse, production say the day. After work, you know, I tipped along and I go to the shop and they would have left the big ladders up. So I get up on the ladder, I look down the painted floor or something, whatever they left for me, and I leave notes. Right. And then I go in the wardrobe and they'd have costumes on mannequins, you know, and I'd pin collars and I'd leave little notes and things. It was just so hard. And then I come to rehearsals any time I could. I come all day Saturday out of penance, you know, I just do penance sit there all, to, to try to persuade people that I was able to do a right. job, right. to do two jobs at once. I thought, I can't do this. This is crazy. It's, it's just too much, you know. And I, <laughs> I got through it. I mean, I, hopefully, no, no lives were lost anyway, but... Um, no, it was I a good show. I saw that show. I mean, I, it was uh, an excellent show. I saw with John Mann and, uh, you know, it's, um, yeah. yeah. And I thought that's, I, I think that's, that's it for me, I think, you know, yeah. I think I can do both. Yeah. And I really like the film work a lot, it's grown for me, you know, when I think back then as a somewhat junior art director, um, it's still, it was more of what I wanted to do, I'll be honest, and, and also, it was a good living. Oh yeah, it's a good living. I mean, yeah. you can't, yeah. I remember one year where I, I, I did a show in Calgary, I did a show in I did two shows in, and I was literally, I had a little portable uh, pop-up um, drafting board and I would take that with me, I'd be in some hotel room and I'd be drafting away at night, I'd be sending stuff off by FedEx, just trying to get one step ahead to do the next job. And I spent the whole one year like that, I, I think I made twenty-eight or $30,000. thousand dollars. I thought I haven't had a week off, you know, it's just been relentless strain. Yeah. And, and hopefully not screwing up. That's the big, it was like one job bled into another. Yeah. And that was, I thought, that's a hell of a lot of strain. I mean, I, it was it was invigorating, of course, you know, when you, you feel like you really are, you're alive <laughs> and kicking. But it's very, uh, it's very hard to keep up that pace, you know. And yeah. then somebody offers you a nine months job with a reasonable, <laughs> Salary, yeah. and again, you're doing something that you love doing. Yeah, and it was. Yeah, it's hard to say no. It's hard to say no. It, it is hard to say no. I, you're, are you better at saying no now? I'm really good at saying no. <laughs> <laughs> that is um, Helen's mum painted that that uh, picture. Or the or the. Sometimes people say, well, why don't you, you know, give a talk or something at a, yeah. uh, at a film school? Uh, I go, well, it's just not, it's not my thing. I mean, I, when I work, I've just come off, what, just a, almost off a job, uh, where I'm working with people in their 30s. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's, they've been 30 years younger than me. Yeah. And that's what I like to do. I like to work with younger people, but I, not in any sort of, pedagogical way but just I just like to f I, I like the energy and I like very skilled young people it's great to bounce off yeah I, who, I, who I, are I get on it. top of their game or, or or becoming so yeah and I feel like I actually have something to say to them and and, 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 and everything's right there on the in front yeah, of you and I have lovely conversations where I'm trying to explain where my head's at and why I'm doing it that way and they go oh okay that's interesting you know, I'd like that without being a classroom setup. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think I'd... No, I don't see how you could... I, I mean, I can understand how you could maybe...
talk about the history of art direction or design sure. or something like that, and you could show a lot of slides of opera sets or something like yeah, that. But I don't point. see how you can actually do it without having the shop there and all the tools and all the stuff and, yeah. and actually having projects. I mean, that's the project. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's it. And then, and, and then also asking younger set designers to come down to the shop floor and you'll see. To us, talk to the construction manager. He's the brains of the operation. Mm -hmm. you know, he will he will tell us how he's going to make it. I'm not going to guess. You know, of course yeah. I've got a, a good understanding of how he's going to make it. But it's great for younger people who haven't gone through that to see mm -hmm. how those cogs turn and why we do things a certain way. You know? yeah. I think that's, that's any. And I just went out for beers with them two nights ago. A bunch of them. You know, they're all on another show. They all left Shogun around Christmas time because we yeah. were kind of almost tapped out. Right. And they all moved on to another show and it was just nice to see them all a couple of nights ago and um, yeah. Yeah, that's great. And then um, with Doug Higgins, I don't know if you Yes, know I know Doug, yeah, Doug yeah. and Charlie, his son, yeah. which I did a whole Well, Doug thing was uh, having beers with us because Doug is a fully fledged uh, set designer. I mean, yeah. he's, he was a production designer for years. Yeah. And then in 2009, he approached me to say that he w he wanted me to hire him. And I said, oh, come on, what do you mean to hire you? He said, you, you, from now on, you're going to hire me. And you've got to come over to my house, and I'll, sh I'll show you my portfolio. I said, oh, don't be ridiculous, Doug. You don't to show me a portfolio. Like, huh? Huh? Why you come over? So I came, I spent the, most of the day with him, and he had reams and reams of beautiful pencil drawings and models and it was like worked for Doug you know yeah, a, lot yeah. of, a lot of us had yes yes and so I said all right well fine I had, okay well come come on as a set designer I mean I guess you know he was brilliant yeah and you know that was 13 years ago yeah I hope you won't mind me saying he's, he's 83 now and he's like fully up and running, and he's and he loves again loves the thirty year old kids, the kids, yeah, yeah. and he outperforms them on yeah. some levels. I mean, on a lot of cerebral design yeah. level, he's like miles ahead of any of us. Yeah, yeah. And they're a gog at what he does, and he just draws and draws and draws, and then he'll. He said, "How okay? You've always got to tell me if I've got three hours to do it, or I've got three days." Or do I have three weeks? Because that's how I'll gauge how right. much I put into that job. Right, right. And he's brilliant. Anyway, yeah. He was out for beers the other night too. Yeah, well, that's great. That it's a bit hard because be it's hard of here. It was hard because it was one of those places that was really full noisy. Of Everything is noisy now. Oh nowadays. my god, my voice is quite low pitched, so I'm always having a shout in people's ears. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of her illustrators, uh, Kirsten. Uh, uh, You're working now. You, yes. You, now, so let's talk about just some of the terminology behind things. Mm. Uh, what's a supervising art director? Okay. okay. <laughs> well, just quite literally, you're supervising <laughs> other art directors. Okay. You, know, you see, you have a, a show that's large enough to have, you know, a number of art directors. Uh -huh. And virtually all art, art directors have all got their own strengths. Some, some are like very, very digital, very, very good at graphics, or very uh -huh. have an illustrative bias. But usually, art directing is about managing, not so much actually executing yourself necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, although, yes, that's that's part of the job. Mm -hmm. So supervise. It's like a large project management right. role. Yeah, where you're not only managing budgets and, and schedules and that sort of thing and you're managing how the thing how a show is designed you, know, right. you work with a designer and you facilitate you make you get the right people plugged into the right job right and then you keep keep all of that going yes and keep the designer happy yeah right and about it. Production designer, who's who's who who? Was well, higher? Yes, production is a hierarchically. There's a production designer, and then there are art directors, right? And then assistant art directors, right. and then it branches out into set designers and graphic designers and model makers. Right, right, right. 
you know. But um, it was a turning point because every I did a number of shows where American people come up from the states. Yes. They bring cause Vancouver was you know in its early days. I guess they didn't feel confident that there were enough people. Yeah. To take on that role, so I worked under a few supervising art directors who came up from the states. And you get to a point where you think, well, okay, I, can, I know I can do the job. Um, and then producers see that you can do the job. And then things shifted. You know, the, the, the pond got a bit larger here. It's not a very big pond, no. Vancouver, but it, got, it grew. And then gradually, once you've actually had one or two jobs, the jobs just come. You know, once you've established uh, yeah. something of a reputation, you, yes. you get, you can, you get more offers. Yeah, okay. it's n this is not a place where things necessarily are initiated unless it's through the CBC That's or right. something. Yeah, you know, they, we, we, we serve uh, other 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 entities. Other masters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Projects always coming in from from elsewhere. You know, with, yeah, you know, employing a lot of local people. Yeah, but the show that I'm on f right now, for example, is a Disney FX co-production right. FX. And um, yeah, it's. Uh, it, I, I don't even know how many people are on the crew. You know, well over. A, well, I mean, it's hard to count because of all the visual effects houses and so on. Oh yeah, there's Hundreds houses. Of there's houses like thousands thousands in other people, places. Yeah. In Ireland. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. All over the place, all over the world. Yeah. But I mean, it's a, quite a large show. You know, it's a ten part. It's a series. Yeah. It's ten parts. What I liken it to, it's like a. It's not a sprint; it's a marathon, you know? yeah. and it's like a very large feature that's spread out over fourteen months. Yes, and uh, because we built every bit as much scenery as you would for a very large feature, uh, and, and then some. Mm -hmm. So it's been a really interesting progress, a process. Um, as a production designer, which was just my best luck to. I know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 Great. Great. Which has been really great. So what's next? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> my hammock. No. No. Um, no I'm going to finish uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah. And um, I, you know, people said, oh, why do you get an agent? You know, I don't, I don't do you need an agent if you're, no, if you're. I, yeah. I suppose if I w wanted to aggressively pursue being a production designer, I would, yes, because I, I think yeah. what I've learned about watching other designers and their interactions with their agents is they, the agent obviously wants you to be employed. Yeah. Whether yeah. you like it or not, yes, yeah, so and so they push you forward to interview for this, and you know, over the years, I, I've had offers to do smaller projects, and I've read scripts, and I thought, wow, gosh, you couldn't pay me enough to do it. Like, scripts that really didn't appeal to me, mm. so I would never want to be beholden to anybody or have anybody wanting, you know, wanting to push me forward. I, I think I'd like to just proceed at my own pace, yeah. whatever that is, and I. Not even sure that there's more after this. Right. I, I don't like to think so. Of course, if the show is well received, yes. that's exactly how I've got on in the past. You, 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 you get a reputation or you get word of mouth, you know. And, and part of it, too, is even if the show is not well received, sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. like if your piece of that. Is is you know the, yeah. it, it, it didn't fall down in mid shot and or yeah. you know <laughs> or, or or the paint didn't start running yeah. or, you know or something like that you know the, the, then they say well camera. you know the show was terrible but you know those I mean, sets like were both, you know yeah. honestly because then, then it then it validates the whole thing yeah you know, I I like to think that, I mean we've done a, a, a pretty creditable job on the scenery and the costumes are amazing. I've never seen a costume department like this on this show yeah. here in Vancouver. Yeah, great. With the, the level of skill and the sheer driving force, you know, there's 50 of them still cranking it out. And this is Shogun, this is yeah. set in Japan. In oh, 1600, yeah, you know, it's right. a ve very specific period of yeah. Yeah. the Sengoku period, it was a very small okay. window, you know, before Japan shut down and the Edo period began. The problem for us is that we look endlessly to the internet because that's our best resource. Yeah. And you get drawn into black and white 19th century photos. You think, okay, well, that object or that thing, that door, that hardware on that door, I'm going to use that. Mm -hmm. And then some 
person in Kyoto who is an expert says, oh, no, 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 the handle wouldn't have been that in 1600. It would have been this, you know. So we're constantly referring back to what I call little wibbly-wobbly paintings. We go, well, it's hard to make out what the details are, but we have a mania for authenticity on this show. Yes, we were talking about that when when I saw you before. Everything is all-consuming. Yes. Uh, I say that... Is a positive and a negative. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to elaborate too much. But well, it's it's, like, I understand that it's great to get addicted to getting it right. Of course, you know, and, to, and but let's not sacrifice. Yeah, something. If it was, if you just twist it on its side, would be that much better mm-hmm. visually. Mm-hmm. So that's what I think. That's yeah. what I think production design is about. It's about getting production, production value. Yeah, yeah. Making those choices yeah. and. Do we want to be a hundred percent correct only because it's correct, or do we want to actually turn it on its edge a little bit? And the shot's got to work. Make it more interesting. Yeah, you know? yeah. So this, yeah, it's been an interesting uh, journey, I have to say. Cool. <laughs> cool. Really cool. That's great. And it's a cracking good yarn, I think. <laughs> That's it's, right. it's a good yeah, story. Yeah. It's, like, it's got, it's got street cred. You say Shogun, people go, oh yeah, Shogun. They oh think yeah. Everybody in his dog read it. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. Far too thick. I started I just... <laughs> it a couple of times, <laughs> and and I uh, I saw a couple of uh, episodes of the old yes. series, right? Which was actually yeah. for its time, yeah. and yeah. time and place. Yeah. It was quite a credible sure. job. Yeah. And Richard Chamberlain was a household name, yeah, because of Doctor Kildare, I think, and yeah. he was a bit of a heartthrob, and. Uh, yeah, so the, I I, st- I watched one episode. I sat through it when I first got the job. I thought, right, I'm going to have a look at this. I watched about twenty minutes. I thought, God, this, I can't. I don't want to fill my head with this. They shot I, a bunch of it in Japan. Too. They did. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yes, I, I I had a yeah. dossier of information about it yeah. given to me. Yes, a lot of it was shot shot in Japan. Yeah. And we originally were going to shoot some elements. We were going to shoot a month or six weeks or something in Japan. Mm-hmm. On this show, mm-hmm. uh, but that, as these things so often do, it just fell by the wayside. Yeah, because of economics. Sure. And you have to wonder what is it that you're going to get that you can't build here. Well, yeah, y- yeah. You know, like vast temples, and yeah. I always thought there would be a, a unit going over there to do all sorts of yeah, yeah. photography. Even if it was it's, just plates or something. Yeah, yeah. They, they're not. They don't seem to be doing that. You know? Yeah. Um, what's interesting is that FX have uh, decided midway through the project that they wanted it larger, they wanted the scale bigger, they wanted to fly over Osaka, they wanted to, and that was quite, not quite where the showrunner wanted to take it, so uh-huh. things have shifted a little bit, you know, right. the visual effects budget's mushroomed and yeah. It's got bigger, which is, I think is only good. You know, you go to 1600, <laughs> yeah. Osaka, better bloody fly over it. Like, I want to see <laughs> it from the shore. Like, yeah, why come on. Why, why creep see, through I it? I fly past those temple rooftops. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, here's my old fashioned board, which I was going to chuck this out. Uh, it's quite old. Um, I almost chucked it out about a year and a half ago. I thought, oh, I'm never going to use that. It's actually really useful. Oh, it's it's great for sketching, you yeah. know. And it's great yeah. having this because yeah. it's just like because I don't really do a lot of designing on computer. Uh, I'll be honest. Right. I, it's, it's somehow I bypassed that. Um, I mean, I can, but I just like to sketch, you know. Yeah. And uh, these are all my books that I hardly ever use anymore. I mean, I gradually. I just go to the internet all the time. Yes, I mean, right. I know I've got certain books in here that I, I do I, use. I, I know. know what you mean. <laughs> it's, it's irresistible. I mean, even all these, these are all cookery books here, and I, I never use them because I, if I just think, oh, what can I do with these radishes? Can I roast some radishes? <laughs> I, just, I just Google roast, roasting radishes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what we do now. We don't. That's good. So you. So what's next? We don't know. I don't know. They're, they're I mean, look, I, I think call. I'd like to oh, dream yeah. on about yeah. doing another big fat show. Yeah. that's really interesting. Of yeah. course, I'd like that. We're, do you write at all? Do you create? I mean, uh, I mean, I know you. You're, you're creating in in your job. Do you do you create from scratch? Do you come? Do you have scripts that you come no. up with and ideas? 
Yeah. I like reading. <laughs> <laughs> I like reading. I like re- write. I like writing letters. Mm-hmm. Email letters. I. I wrote letters to the editor. <laughs> <laughs> to my relatives. I, I edit a lot, and I and I write. Oh, my, in the course of my job, I, I write hundreds of emails. Yeah. But I think there's a whole style to that. I just edit, edit, edit. You know, mm-hmm. I pare it down to the nub of the idea, whatever it is that you want to say. Mm-hmm. Don't waffle, because I don't read paragraphs. I my eyes glaze over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If somebody sends me a long, learned email, I just glaze right over. <laughs> okay, fine, I'll read it today. I'll read it later. I like bullet, Get somebody bullet, else po- read bullet points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's a knack to that. It's communications. Yeah. How, okay. to get, how to get the idea across in the fewest possible words. Sure. I like all of that, if you call that writing. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's great. I think you're doing, you're in a great, great situation. You're, yeah. t- you're in a great place. Yes. Uh, yeah, incredibly, yeah. Uh, incredibly is it, privileged. Is there yeah. anything that you want to do in the business that that you haven't done that you'd that you'd I'd like, like to do craft service for a day <laughs> I will make I'll make a killer egg sandwich um, no actually I can think back years ago if I, if I was having a hard day on a show you know like things have gone not not so well I, I'd, I'd stare at the craft service person and go, swap your job for the day would you just like punt over to the art department and I could make egg sandwiches <laughs> today because that's all that's what I feel like doing you know yeah. I I, th- I I don't know that I, I wouldn't want to produce. That would be hellish. I directed a show once, mm. and I and I was kind of always wanted to direct a, a a play and wanted to direct. It's a common disease among arts people, and uh, and man, everybody was coming to me saying, "What well, oh um, sh- what should should this be read?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'd say. Well, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> I don't, I mean, yeah. You know, the number of questions it's about insane. stuff. It's insane. It's like being, nobody, yeah. is there, suddenly everybody's like five, year old, five years old. Yeah. You know, and they need, and, I, and I'm conscious of that because I know that I've been that person asking, should this be read? And I've learned not to do it. Yeah. I've learned over the years, keep it simple. If you need, I'm talking mainly with a, with a production designer, but yeah. sometimes I interact yeah. with a, directly with the director as yeah. well. And just keep it so simple. But don't, don't go on, you know, should, should there be red grapes or white grapes? You know, it's actually, it doesn't matter. Just grapes. tell you what, just bring the grapes, you know, it'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. And yeah. you learn that after a while. Yeah. Because you could be supremely irritating. Yeah. If, you, if, if they, they were today, to, they would say if they wanted <laughs> red grapes. Don't you think? Yeah, it was in the script. Yeah, fine. it would be red What I get grapes. as a designer, as a designer, is people, in you know, set deck, props, whatever, you walk into a space, they see you and they go, Oh, Helen! And they come rushing over and they, they want to ask you something. Like, and I just like, <laughs> just look away. Friendly. I'm actually Helen's twin sister. Seriously. I don't know where she is. And I think, I, you know, I, I don't want to dissuade people from coming and asking me something, but it's like, save it up, you know. <laughs> just, not every time. Not every time I see you, please don't come running at me yeah. with five questions about. How this knot should get tied, or I yeah, don't yeah, care yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got other things to do. But no, that terrible. sounds harsh, but it, yeah. it's but people do get in that 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 mode of somebody has to approve of everything. Therefore, I'm going to surrender to that process. And you go, no. What people who get asked lots of questions really like it when other people take the initiative uh-huh. and come yeah. up with something good. You go, oh, yeah, 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 go after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, so there's there's as an actor, that too. <laughs> it's lots of max. Yeah, I, I'm guilty of doing it as an actor. I'd go to the director and say, "What do you think? You think I should? You know, like when I'm supposed to be crying there? You know, I don't really think I should cry. You know, I yeah. should well, probably." Yeah. And you can just sit and go. <laughs> I, I need roll, some coffee. Back you know, in the uh, yeah, yeah. It must be hard though yeah. when you when you're in that position to be constantly. Yeah. 
Well, at the I, other end of a quick question. So. Ev everybody is so concerned, even even people who really shouldn't be concerned, with the fact that you know every minute is costing you know hundred yeah, grand, yeah, you know, yeah, or yeah, whatever, yeah. you know, and 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 you're terrified of making terrified. a mistake yeah. or doing something wrong that has or to be corrected. Oh yeah, oh my God, please let's not go to oh, five right. takes. Oh, oh, you know, you know, and yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's a big part of it. It's a huge part yeah. of it. Time, yeah. time is yeah. money. Yeah. Yeah. Just, my only gripe is that I lost my dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to yeah, yeah. go over there. Yeah. That was my plan. I finished this job. I was going to go over there and spend a month or two, yeah. uh, spell my brother off, and look after him and hang out with my dad drinking gin and tonics in the pool. Yeah. Watching him in his speedo. His speedo. He's like a sun worshipper, my dad. It's like yeah. leather, you know. <laughs> it's a bit of a family joke. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. 2022 got off to a bad start. Yeah. And then the Ukraine got invaded too, on top of that. Oh, God. And that happened right about the time because my dad was a real Russ <laughs> Russophile. You know, I think he'd be horrified. I'm a, I'm a bit of a Russophile. My yeah. father always. I wrote a couple of know, books. Yeah. yeah, you did, yeah. yeah. And I think he would have been like just like mortified yeah. you know, to have yeah, known what, what's happening. Yeah. You know, so you miss that. Yeah. To dad. Um, yeah. Well, we had a, yesterday was Father's Day, so I made a house special. Mm -hmm. House special is half gin, half red vermouth, slice of orange and top it up with um, tonic water. Sounds great. And you have it with pork scratchings. Sounds really awesome. Pork scratchings. Oh, I love them. <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs>